We asked Sally Sebright to tell us about herself and the amazing conservation work she's doing through her blog, Scientist in Limbo, and through her educational system, Guardians of the Deep. Here at Earth Kids TV, we enjoy science and love the ocean. Sally also tells us about her Chakma Champions holiday program. When I um, came up with the title of, of the blog, it started off as a blog and then I kind of moved around and developed it into now it's a, it's a full website. In limbo, I very much was in limbo at that point. Um, I had had a very bad experience at varsity and I didn't know if I wanted to continue with science. Yes? What does in limbo mean? In this case, it was between ideas between it it was I was kind of floating I didn't know where I belonged and um, through the writing of the the articles that you see on on the blog on the website now um, I rediscovered where I belonged basically okay so Guardians of the Deep um, it started off as an after-school club okay. and it kind of developed from there so with COVID, obviously I couldn't do that anymore. So I developed an online program. So during the hard lockdown that we had first, I did a lot of lockdown learning stuff. So I did free lessons just for kids that needed to, I don't know. Get out? No. In a sense, because they oh. couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then after that, I did do a term of online stuff when we were still in the lockdown. Um, and now, now, so there are a number of things that Guardians does. It's, I developed a six year curriculum that looks at ocean conservation and marine science. And it gives kids the opportunity to see what's out there. And you don't have to be a scientist to care. You don't have to be David Attenborough to make a difference. It empowers kids um, with the idea that our choices, our everyday choices, have the power of change. So that was kind of the premise behind um, Guardians of the Deep. And then there's just a whole whack of really, really cool things that we do. So I have um, various connections around the world, researchers that I've worked with, filmmakers, conservation filmmakers, um, and various conservationists that will either, if they're in South Africa, will come and chat to the kids, or through Zoom or Skype, we will do um, a guest speaker slot. We do um, field trips, um, develop the Chakma Champions holiday program. So there are two holiday programs, Kraken. The Krakens is completely based on um, the marine side of things. Chakma Champions uses baboons as a species to show that no habitat happens in isolation. Nature is completely interconnected. And baboons use all of the habitats, wetlands, rivers, fainbos, and rocky shores. So it's to show that everything in nature is interconnected and to do something to one section of it will have ripple effects in the rest of the environment. Does that answer your question? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, was Guardians of the Deep based, uh, like the same based on Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> She's been going on about that all day. Oh, it I actually know. wasn't. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to find... So the reason I chose Deep was because anything that we do on land affects the ocean and even the de deep sea. At the time, we had just discovered, and I say we again, but I mean scientists had just discovered plastic in the deepest part of the Mariana Trench. So we are even affecting places we haven't even been to. Yeah. So I wanted to include deep there. Um, where Guardians came in, I didn't want something aggressive like Warrior. Um, I wanted something like a custodianship because nobody owns the environment. We just there, we are actually part of it. And it's now become um, we've got to a point where some of us actually need to protect it because not everyone is of the ma same mindset. So that's where Guardians came in. So then it kind of grew from there. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what do you do like day to day for your job? Like, what would like uh, a day in your life be? Kind of? <laughs> well, um, my days are all different. It depends on what what I'm focusing on for that specific day. So. Um, I'm either writing an article and then I kind of get completely consumed by that um, or I'm organizing holiday programs, um, I'm baboon proofing bins because it's more, more of a wildlife proofing um, because any of that rubbish that ends up in the environment will impact wildlife as a whole and the environment and it'll end up in the sea. So um, I'm also... I have written a children's book, so I'm busy, uh, actually tomorrow night I have a meeting with my illustrator and my publisher to develop a series of children's books. Um, so there's a lot of organizing, then there's also writing content for um, the presentations that I give as part of the curriculum that I do. So it's trying to get the education program out there. So there's a lot of groundwork that I'm having to do, a lot of logistics for this holiday program as well. Um, yeah, so my days vary. And then I always try and spend at least some of the day in the, out in nature somewhere, either in a rock pool or <laughs> up a mountain. <laughs> yes. What is doom and gloom? Doom and gloom, or does that occur quite a lot in the website? <laughs> oh no! I read it a bit. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Um, doom and gloom, it's just, uh, it's more of a feeling. I can't really describe it. It's just, I don't like it. <laughs> it sounds it's very just, depressing. It yeah. is, it's very depressing and it's very negative, and I don't like that side. I want to try and be part of a positive solution. I don't like to spend too much time on the doom and gloom. Uh, yes, you had a question. Yes. Um, when you go and spend time specifically at the beach, because I probably get the beach more than um, but anyways, at the beach, what is something, is it, it has the, say, the conditions of our beaches during our time, have they improved or have you noticed the difference in them or? That's quite a good question. Um, <laughs> no. Sadly, no. Are you talking about litter? Anything. Anything. Like, doesn't matter. So during hard lockdown, I was actually quite interested. I wanted to go and have a look and see what was happening on the beach because I would have thought, because we have a family of otters at our local beach, and I would have thought that they would be coming out more. Yeah. Um, but obviously I couldn't go out and look. Um, what I have noticed now, even, you know, when we were first allowed out again, the amount of rubbish is still the same and that comes from what I said earlier about anything we do on land affects the ocean so a lot of our rubbish or a lot of the rubbish that is in the ocean or that gets washed up is actually from our country from the land it's not always just tossed over the over the board on yeah. the passing ships I mean that does happen but so in lockdown, we were consuming just as much as, yeah. I mean, well, I can't say that for definite, but um, yeah. So when I walk on the beach, I do pick up rubbish and I haven't noticed, noticed too much of a difference. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Yeah, we don't like